Brian. <laughs> Coach Troop does win the die roll. Starts with Spire Bluff Canal. He'll lead on Faithless Looting. Discarding two lands. Looks like he's a little heavy on that. Steam Vents and Scalding Tarn were the discards. Yeah, and that's the beauty of something like Faithless Looting. It turns dead cards in your early hands uh, into uh, like a nice curve. Or it lets you not draw with double Phoenix on turn two. You know? It's just good. Or, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the upside, the ceiling is quite a bit higher than the floor, but it is a very powerful spell. Shear is going to start with uh, another powerful cantrip. He'll play Spiral of Canal into Serum Visions. Scry is one top, one bottom. And for Coach Roop on turn two, second Canal and a thing in the ice. Yeah, now the Storm decks usually play a, a, a few pieces of interaction, one or two bounce spells, uh, usually like one Lightning Bolt that they can find off of Gisling Given or something uh, to give them outs to things like Meddling Mage. So a single Meddling Mage on Grape Shot doesn't KO them. However, not all of these are able to deal with a creature with four toughness. So this early drop from uh, Matthew is going to allow him to apply some pressure here against Caleb. Uh, on top of that, at some point, uh, Caleb might try to go for something like empty the warrants for six or eight, and it's not quite enough to get the job done. And Matthew has time to actually find a thing in the ice and transform it and get rid of all of those tokens, undoing everything that Caleb put his turn into. Just a snow-covered island on the second turn for Sheer as Coach Roop goes to work with a second faithless looting here on his third turn. Trigger on Thing in the Ice, that's down to three counters. Very close to transforming into the thing out of the ice, the Awoken Horror. Yeah, when it was in Saturday, it was one of my favorite cards to pair in all of my uh, blue-red base spell decks. You know, uh, and, and if you know me at all, you know I love me some blue-red spell base decks. <laughs> <laughs> Discard was Lightning Bolt and Lightning Axe, followed by Island into Opt, Thing in the Ice down to two counters. Scry to the bottom will co troop. Heavy on that removal element, he does still have another Lightning Bolt in hand. You kind of want to have one ish against Storm. Yeah, this gut shot is perfect here, though, because it allows him to transform this Thing in the Ice right now and start clocking Caleb for seven a turn, put him on a three turn clock and maybe even a two turn clock. Yeah, he fell to 18 to gut shot there. He will use his last mana to cast another gut shot, knocking Shear to 18. That would transform the thing in the ice. Shear's going to remand the gut shot, really just to draw a card. You still get the thing in the ice trigger. You still get to transform. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I, I guess he just needs to, to remand anything to turn it into a fresh card. But giving Matthew that free spell off of Gutshot for something later, whether that's another thing in the ice uh, or per perhaps uh, something like an Arclight Phoenix found off of a Faithless Looting could be important. But with this clock here looming, it's almost too much to not just cycle. Yeah, there's not going to be a lot of later as Awoken Horror does rumble across and knock Shearer down to 12. Yeah. I would have liked to potentially have seen uh, Caleb actually remand one of the uh, Faithless Looting slash Opt type cards because uh, there, there's a, a really small chance that remand does a whole lot in the matchup uh, since Matthew already had a thing in the ice on the battlefield. Not a whole lot of huge hits otherwise. Sure, yeah, once once that one's down, that's, that's the big one you want to remand is the thing itself. So you can't really do that on the draw. Shear's going to go to work on his turn. Starts on Manamorphose into Manamorphose. Yeah, it seems like he's digging for one of his mana creatures here. Finds one with Baral, which is a pretty big deal. Shocks a 10 off of Steam Vents. Still has two mana floating off Mana Morphos. There's that Baral. Mana pool empty. Storm's at three. Unfortunately, he burned two Mana Morphos, so he lost out on a bit of mana. But he needed to cycle those in order to find the Baral to have a chance of killing this turn. Because otherwise, there's a good chance he dies to just a Lightning Bolt and then the attack from Matthew on the follow-up. Here is a Desperate Ritual. Storm's at 4, 3 mana. Possible Shear might just be going for a Storm for 8 to uh, Grape Shot down the Awoken Horror, but he's got bigger plans. Yeah. Another Red Ritual, and here's Past in Flame. Storm's at 6, 2 red floating. Yeah, all he needed was that mana creature, and now it looks like he has it all. Uh, two more Desperate Rituals coming from the Graveyard, two mana Morphos, and now all he needs is an actual win condition or something like Gisling given to keep the chain going. Desperate Ritual, Desperate Ritual, Storm's at 8, Red Mana's at 6, here's Mana Morphos, Storm's at 9. Going to turn that to 5 Red Mana and 2 Blue. Still has the other Mana Morphos ready to flashback. Here's Gifts on Given, he still has Pass and Flames in the graveyard to flashback. Storm's at 10, this one is going to be a walk-in. Going to see a Grape Shot in the mix off of the flashback here. I, uh, you know, you want to talk about something else? 
Because <laughs> yeah. uh, the game's over. It's just going to take him, like, another minute or two to actually win the game. Right. Grape shot, uh, three rituals, desperate, poetic, manamorphose. You still get to flashback your past in flames. Then you get to flashback your gifts on given. Storm goes from 10 to 1,000. You know, he's got to get to 18 here, but pretty trivial to do so. Yeah, and uh, Matthew, uh, heads up here, actually puts the grape shot in the graveyard, uh, understanding that if he puts the, the grape shot in Caleb's hand, he gets to cast it from hand first, and then flashback past the flames, and then cast it from the graveyard. Yeah, you, you give Shear the opportunity to misclick here, though. This is not a player who's going to do that. There's those rituals from hand that were found off the gift son given, and ooh, he just already has a grave shot, and Coach Hoop's seen enough. Yeah, there's just so much mana there. Caleb basically had the, the entire chain wrapped up. All he needed uh, from all of that was literally just the mana creature, and you saw him burn those two mana morphos just as kind of a desperation attempt to dig for it, and eventually found it and won very easily. All right, so over on Coach Hoop's side for his cyborg, he's going to want to interact a little bit more in these sideboard games. His options here, he has three Ceremonious Rejection, three Surgical Extraction, two Ancient Grudge, two Blood Moon, two Anger of the Gods, two Dispel, and a Threads of Disloyalty. What do you think is coming in here? So uh, you want basically anything that can interact. Uh, something like Surgical Extraction is not usually super good, but you can get them at the right time uh, and, and put it to good use. Plus it's another free spell, so I, I think it comes in, but it's not particularly good. Uh, Anger of the Gods can give you a chance against uh, an Empty the Warrens draw, but I don't expect Caleb's going to be relying on Empty the Warrens too much because uh, it's, it's just not good against Thing in the Ice. So I think Dispel comes in for sure, maybe Surgicals, uh, and maybe Anger, but nothing else. Sure. Yeah, some relatively light sideboarding. Uh, mostly you want to try to check Shear on the mana creature in the early turns either Lightning Bolts, and then maybe a Clutch Dispel can push him off uh, the combo otherwise. And right. Just go for a fast kill. And over on Shear's side, his sideboard is a Flame Slash, two Lightning Bolts, a Spell Pierce, two Abrades, an Echoing Truth, a Negate, a Dismember, three copies of the pieces of the puzzle this weekend. You do sometimes see four of those. A Wipe Away and two more Empty the Warrens. Uh, so from this side, Caleb is playing a, a racing game against the Phoenix deck. He knows that they don't have a ton of interaction outside of like a few Dispels or uh, some, some maybe Spell Pierces or something out of the sideboard. Uh, maybe an Is That Charm or two. The Is a Phoenix deck does not interact with you in the right ways. So I think Caleb's plan here is to just assemble a Baral Tifa Compliance and just go for his normal win. Don't over sideboard. Don't go for things like Empty the Warrens. Don't go for pieces of the puzzle because this isn't a resource trading game. Matthew's not hitting him with a lot of discard spells. He's going to have a st stock hand at basically all points. Um, other than that, you know, maybe something like Flame Slash has a means of taking care of a, a stray Crackling Drake or a Thing in the Ice. But I wouldn't worry about that stuff too much. Just play your game. This Is It Phoenix deck has been a really big fan favorite since it hit the scene. We've seen it increase popularity over time. And... If you want to play it at home, maybe check out uh, Star City Games Game Night. And find one of these near you, get some exclusive tokens and sleeves. This week, uh, this month, the month of January, we're doing the Purdue. <laughs> that was spot on. You oh, really, dude, I played a lot yeah. of Street Fighter. You've been practicing that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just stuck in my brain for all eternity. Yeah, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> You'll forget your name before you forget that. Yeah. Uh, that's the January promotion. We do have a unique sleeve and token every month. In February, we're going to have Yeti Steady Go. Uh, that one's my favorite. I just love that pun. Uh, and the, the artwork is phenomenal. Yeah, really great stuff uh, every month here. And in March, this is the promotion we have rolled out so far, Veni Vidi Armadici. Oh, my God. That name slays me. I don't even... It's so good. Is it, is it a game I saw at Armadillo? Yes. That's the approximate translation. Uh, okay, you know, I, I guess, do they, look, I don't speak other languages. I don't know how to do a pun in another language, so I'm just going to say that this is how you do puns in, uh, I want to say, Italian? This this is or an English-Italian pun okay. is what it is. It, it's not, I don't think that this would be funny to Latin? an Italian speaker. No, that's speaker. Latin, isn't it? Is it? I think I just, Might be Latin. I think I just offended some people. That's my fault. But it was out of sheer ignorance. Yes, which, well, 
that's where most of, of that's, that's where most offensive things come from. But, but you have no excuse to be ignorant about Star City Games Game Night. Go to go.starcitygames.com slash game night to find a game night near you. Just want to say you confirmed Italian before we moved on. Yeah, but like, why would you rely on me? You're my partner. <laughs> <laughs> We're pros now. I would never lead you astray on purpose. However, I am a deeply stupid human being. Well, you know, uh, I have only met approximately four smart people in my entire life, not including myself. That number sounds high. No, I've met four. I'm jealous. Yeah. Four is a lot. Yeah. We're underway here in game two. Coach Troop is on the play. Scalding Tarn is where he'll start. No cantrip, no nothing as he passes a shear. He'll shock to 18 off of steam vents. And he does have a seer and visions. Yeah, Matthew not having a, a turn one play here is a bit strange. I guess that just means it's thought scour, you know. They have so many one mana f uh, facts that dig through their deck. I can't imagine that he has anything other than thought scour, other than maybe he only has three instant sorceries and he has a thing that he wants to cast on turn two. Both cards scry to the top for Sheer. Coach Troop's going to crack. That's Scalding Tarn. He's at 19. Finds Basic Island. I would expect something here. I guess he could be playing Opt. There's a Thought Scour at the front of the hand. That's going to be the play. Targets himself. Spire Bluff Canal Island hits the bin, and he'll draw. Hope he doesn't need land, because that's two down the drain. Yeah, that would be an unfortunate miss. It's one of my least favorite things about cards like Thought Scour, things that mill you but have an effect. You always at the back of your mind, you're just thinking to yourself, man, I wish I had drawn that instead of milling it. Oh, yeah. Man. And then you think later on, you're like, maybe I shouldn't Thought Scour myself because I might mill over the card I want to draw. I'll Thought Scour them yeah. because then I get to draw my card if it's good. I, uh, I would be willing to bet that I have Thought Scoured my opponent more than most humans. Yeah, I think I've probably also done it more than most. Sometimes you only have 19 cards in your deck, you know? Yeah. Coach Troop did have the second land, though, is Spire Bluff Canal. Sheer has Shivan Reef, no action, and Coach Troop will fire off another NSAP Thought Scour, this time putting a thing in the ice in the graveyard. Yeah, there, there were these uh, old Jeskai flash mirrors where uh, you each had, like, one copy of Moorland Haunt and one copy of... Uh, I forgot the name of the artifact where, uh, or is the equipment where it gets Rune Chanter's Pike? Rune Chanter's Pike. And uh, if you randomly sniped one of those two cards out of your opponent, all you had to do was deal with like some Restoration Angels. <laughs> and that was it. Here's Thing in the Ice for Coach Troop. That's going to resolve. Sheer will fire off an opt in step. Yeah, I expect this uh, Thing Nice to be transforming next turn as well as potentially bringing back an Arclight Phoenix. There's that Ooh. one of Flame Slash out of the sideboard Ooh. that, uh, how you say, I called it! <laughs> as predicted by Todd Anderson, Mountain Flame Shaft, thing, Flame Slash, Thing in the Ice down. Sight of Hand is the follow up for Sheer. One card to the hand, one card to the bottom of the deck. He'll take a point out the Shivan Reef to 17. Gotta be some other cantrip. It is Serum Visions. Now, the Flame Slash coming in uh, makes for an interesting point. Uh, we always talk about pieces of the puzzle as a way to recoup uh, card advantage when your opponent is trying to uh, eliminate your resources via hand disruption, uh, killing your brawls, and, and things of that nature. But if you become uh, the side that is trying to lightning bolt down their creatures, flame slash their creatures, there's a chance that you should be bringing a piece of the puzzle to recoup those resources that you're spending as opposed to the ones that they're taking away from you. Well, you want to talk about generating resources over on Coach Troop's side. He's going to start with Faith Looting. Discards two Arclight Phoenix. That's the clock. And it looks like he's going to be live to bring them back. Opt is the next spell he casts. Two Lightning Bolts in hand, so he'll at least have that. Yeah, it looks like he has uh, multiple copies of Surgical Ooh. Extraction after the draw from Opt, as well as multiple copies of Lightning Bolt. Yeah, he'll go to 15 to cast Surgical Extraction. He decided to cast it before he decided on a target. We'll see where <laughs> he, he lands on that. He just started picking up the deck to look. Right. <laughs> it's like, whoa, buddy. Right, so he gets to see the hand for sheer. Empty the Warren, Spire Bluff Canal, Pieces of the Puzzle, another Shivan Reef, Brawl, a, Chief of Compliance, and a Desperate Ritual. Is that a Planar Chaos color shifted Empty the Warrens? <laughs> or is Caleb Cher just someone who likes to collect cards that are printed weirdly? Matthias contends that it's Sunbleach. I refuse to ask him and contend that it is a color-faded misprint. I like the mystery. 
You decide yeah. at home what you think is going on with that empty of the Warrens. Looks like Caleb actually did bring in that piece of the puzzle, expecting a slightly longer game after sideboard uh, against this is at Phoenix deck, uh, where there's going to be a bit of trading back and forth. Uh, looks like it's going to be a little too slow here. Matthew's going to put six power on the battlefield that flies. We're going to see if that empty of the Warrens has any real impact on this game at all. A surgical removing those sleight of hands. That's not of much consequence for the Storm deck's ability to function. Uh, funny story, Matthew has an Anger of the Gods in hand should things get out of control. Looks like he also has two copies of Lightning Bolt in hand. There's a chance that with an attack next turn, if Caleb isn't able to take this game right now, then we're going to see a game three. Yeah, those two Phoenixes come back. They're going to attack, knock Shearer to 11. Not much time to work with. No, it is not. And, uh, you know, Matthew has not only a Lightning Bolt in hand to be able to kill something like Baral, uh, if necessary, uh, to, to kind of put a gum in the works of Caleb's uh, uh, storm plan for this turn. Uh, he also has another copy of, copy of Surgical Extraction, if I'm not mistaken, to be able to potentially disrupt uh, a pass in Flames turn. Sheer does have some good tools to start spinning the tires if he decides this is the go turn. You know, he already has the mana creature, he has a ritual, he has pieces of the puzzle. It is a little bit awkward, though, because what you're playing around is getting lightning bolted out of the game by exposing your brawl to a lightning bolt. Right. But there's not a lot he can do about it. I think at this point, you have to think, if your opponent has a lightning bolt, chances are you're going to lose anyway because that lightning bolt can just get turned on a dime and hit you in the head, uh, and you're going to be going down minus six points from the attack. So very likely you're dying anyway if they have access to one piece of interaction. Shivan Reefs the land for turn. He is going to cast that brawl. Here is Desperate Ritual. Coach Roof's going to respond to that. Here's Lightning Bolt on the Baral. Yeah, very scared of just dying this turn. I think this is a heads-up Lightning Bolt, even though he takes away the potential to kill Caleb on the following attack step. You never want to let these Storm decks get out of hand. Once they get to start casting spells with a Baral Chief of Compliance or a Goblin Electromancer on the battlefield, uh, things go south in a hurry, as you saw last game. Caleb, only two lands on the battlefield, no lands in hand. Manamorphose into a land, Manamorphose into a brawl, and then just immediately kills Matthew. Yep. Yeah, and this is usually the window that you want when they cast the first ritual with the mana creature on the table. So that resolves. Shear is going to use that three mana from the ritual and cast that empty of the Warrens. One, two, three, four spells, so that should be eight goblins. Yeah, this isn't a bad empty of the Warrens here. Uh, it threads a lot of damage in uh, the next few turns. And uh, Matthew's actually just a little bit short on damage next attack step. And uh, amusingly, Coach Troop has that Anger of the Gods in hand, but that would clear away his Phoenixes. It's just, it's just good deck building. Right? I you play know. against that uh, Magic Online, like I play the Phoenix Mirror, and I get Phoenixes first, and my opponent casts Anger of the Gods, and I'm always livid. I am so <laughs> unbelievably mad every time it happens. As you should be. Oh, no, the Lightning Bolt on top. He should have targeted Caleb targeted with Caleb. the Thought Scour. Thought Scour what himself. What are you doing, Matthew? Coach Troop loses his Lightning Bolt. <laughs> You know, it's actually funny. There, there are arguments to be made about uh, thought scouring your opponent when you have surgical extraction in your deck. If you're able to hit one of those key pieces, like a pass in flames or a grape shot, uh, you might be able to, to basically steal the game in, in a spot where you weren't normally uh, going to win. Yeah, that is true, depending on exactly what you need to be doing for your deck. If you got to find your phoenixes, it's a different equation. But there is some play to hitting your opponent. There was an attack for six. Shears at five. He's going to come across for eight with his goblins. I mean, also, if, you know, if there's a bolt on top of your deck, you should know. You should know that. <laughs> God's got your opponent. Come Coach Troops had seven, but Sheer doesn't have any follow-up beyond a tap Spire Bluff Canal. So here's Lethal Phoenixes. Caleb's going to cast a Bounce Spell on one of them, unsubstantiate. But we know about that Lightning Bolt. Once this damage happens, Coach Troops should be able to lock this one up. Phoenix to next. Shears at two. Lightning Bolt, and we're going to game three. Yeah, we sure are. This is going to be a, a squeaker one way or another. And I think that that was a, uh, d definitely a showcase of, of how not great something like Empty the Warrens is in the matchup. 
Uh, also maybe shows how slow pieces of the puzzle is in the matchup because the Phoenix deck uh, doesn't really try to interact all that much. Um, we're going to see if, if Caleb goes back to the drawing board for the matchup. Uh, just a sec. So we have 895 players in a tennis this weekend at our Modern Yowza. Open. And all of them received a five set of our new personality tokens from Star City Games. These are going to be individual tokens for a lot of our contributors over Star City Games and some of our commentators. Emma Handy with that shapeshifter token, the changeling. Brian Gottlieb, the... I guess we'll look at all. Let's do, do I was going to say, look. can you slow down a second? I'm just trying to take in the majesty all that right. is Emma's changeling token. It is really nice. She's been wanting to make this for a very long time. Really happy to finally see it made for her. All right, next we have J.D. Klumperens, the spirit token. This is actually really amusing. This is emblem. This is evocative of Bloodbraid Elf being killed by Valakut the Molten Pinnacles. These are really nice tokens. Yeah, I, I, the, the spirit of Bloodbraid Elf dying to Valakut the Molten Pinnacle is peak J.D. Yes. Love it. <laughs> All right, next up, Brad Nelson as a, a bug. Insect. <laughs> when I think of Brad Nelson, this is actually not what I think of. <laughs> uh, we got Jerry Thompson as a soldier with lifelink. Uh, unfortunately, that may supplant Aaron Barrett's because there are way more uh, tokens that have lifelink nowadays. We'll see, though. Yeah, that's been the design we've been seeing lately. And then we have a token that we haven't really seen for a while. Brian Gottlieb, the squirrel token. Yeah, and uh, doing the fastball special, the, uh, I want to say Colossus Wolverine, but I think I said that last time and someone yelled at me. Um, mm, I don't know. I anyway. mean, this looks a lot like Gambit to me. Just Gambit doing Gambit things. Throwing the squirrels? I would hope he doesn't throw squirrels. That's abuse! That's, that is <laughs> violent. But you will get all five of these tokens if you make it out to a Star City Games open event. Yeah, super excited about picking up these. Uh, I'm going to be in Indianapolis in a few weeks, and I, I can't wait to have them. And, uh, you know, Brad Nelson lives right down the street from me. I'm going to get a signature from him. Uh, Just get Jade, a stack of them. Yeah, Brian Gottlieb. Hopefully I'll see him in Indianapolis, as well as Jerry Thompson, as they become uh, one of the other duos in the booth alongside Cedric Phillips and uh, Mathi or, uh, Patrick, uh, Patrick, Patrick Sullivan. Sullivan. And uh, that'll, that'll be awesome to watch. So if you're not able to show up in Indianapolis uh, in a few weeks, make sure – to check it out on right here where you're at right now. Yeah. Touch.tv slash SCG Tour. And you can also get these at StarCityGames.com for a purchase of $20 or more, as well as at Star City Games Invitational Qualifiers. All right, game three here between Matthew Kotroop and Caleb Scher. Phoenix versus Storm. Is that versus Is that? Why? Why all now, the violence? Is it on Is it violence? Both players starting with the basic island here. Sheer has an opt at the end of Co-Troop's turn. He'll spray to the bottom and draw. I just want all the Izzet players to win every round. Yep. Snow-covered island for Sheer. No additional action. And now Co-Troop will, Co will fire off the end step opt. He'll also square to the bottom. You know, these are the, the matchups that I'm watching, and I think to myself, you know, maybe we probably shouldn't unban Preordain and Ponder. <laughs> But I don't think it would make either of these decks markedly better. Like, yeah, it would make them better, a little more consistent, finding the things that they're they're digging for. But, like, they already have a bunch of this stuff, and uh, it's relatively similar. Like, Seer Vision's a little bit worse on turn six or whatever than pre and I'll give it that. But on turn one, uh, Seer Vision's usually quite good. I mean, yeah, if you want to make that comparison on turn one, Serum Vision is better on literally every other turn of the game. Preordain is better by a lot. Mm, Here's yep. Serum Visions <laughs> for Kotru. Yep. I think it was Scry one top, one bottom. Aspire Bluff Canal is the land. Don't get me wrong. If you unban Preordain, I'll play them every weekend of my life. Yes. I just don't think it's a good idea. Hey, Ryan, and that is what they should be doing. Trying to yeah. get you getting to play, me to play more magic, not just you specifically, but people in general. <laughs> and for me, that I think is is one reason to unban things rather than to ban things. We'll get to that later, or or not, or not. We just either will or we won't. Leave it the same. <laughs> now Sheer is going to cast a Serum Visions of his own. It's like the three modes of Liliana of the Veil. You can do it up, you can not do it down, or not do it at all three modes. Yes. Up, down, 
nothing. The z zero. That's the secret ability. S secret zero. No one ever knows what that one is. We got a lot of spinning wheels here. Pretty common here from Storm and is at Phoenix just trying to sculpt their hands for the next few turns. First potentially big play is from Coach Troop. Here's a young Pyromancer. Leaves up a breathing pool. Yeah, and that could be uh, a number of things. Dispel, uh, Opt, uh, Thought Scour, all these cards being able to be played at instant speed. Personally, I would love to see a Dispel here counter something like Lightning Bolt out of Caleb Share. Uh, while also generating an extra point of pressure via that elemental token. Yeah, Coach Roop did shock for that, so Shearer knows that something's up. Shearer did have a Shiv on Reef as his third land. So we're back on his turn, see if he has a fourth, exactly what he wants to do, what his plan for the young Pyromancer is. Sometimes you see the Storm player go for a combo turn, sometimes you see them expend a Grape Shot on his threat. Yeah, I believe Caleb does have access to a Grape Shot here. Wouldn't be surprised to see it just pop off on the Young Pyromancer right now. The Grape Shot's towards the front of the hand, though. He's going to start by shocking for Steam Vents. Certainly feels like there's more than just that Grape Shot going on as he goes to 18. Maybe he'll start with Grape Shot on Young Pyromancer. Kill Troop is just going to let that happen. No responses. Huh, that's pretty interesting. Matthew, if he had some sort of, uh, I guess that maybe the, the blue was for just Dispel. Because uh, Grape Shot obviously being a sorcery means Dispel can't target it. Uh, but that means Coach Roop didn't actually have access to uh, an instant speed draw spell either. He did have a surgical extraction, but he wanted to wait on that, possibly looking at targeting that Grape Shot in the graveyard. So you yep. go back to Coach Roop's turn, no fourth land, but he does have a second young Pyromancer. He did not immediately fire off Surgical on the Grape Shot, which makes it feel like that's not the plan. Well, that could be the plan at some point in the future. Right now, it's kind of a, a surprise steal one of your primary win conditions. Um, honestly, I think Young Pyromancer checks uh, something like Empty the Warrens quite well, unless Caleb goes for a full-on uh, ballistic type, you know, Empty the Warren for like 16 or something. And uh, if he's able to take away these Grape Shots, not only that, uh, he takes away that primary win condition, but also takes away some of the ability uh, of Caleb to, to deal with this young Pyromancer. Well, here's Flame Slash from Shearer on the young Pyromancer. Again, no response from Coach Roop. Now Shearer will cast a pieces of the puzzle. That's going to resolve. Looking at Sleight of Hand, Manamorphose, Predic Ritual, Serum Visions, and another Manamorphose. So you can pick any two of these five. Yeah, I think double Manamorphose is probably the pick, unless there is some uh, need for that extra red mana. Once you get uh, the combo going, Manamorphose is your best spell by a wide margin. Yeah, you're exactly right. Double Manamorphose it is. He'll pass to Coach Roop. Coach Roop thinking about something end step, but decides against it. We're back on his turn. Looks like he drew another Surgical Extraction. Yeah, I mean, he can just kind of snag a few things if he wants. The Grape Shot's for sure. And then kind of figure out if there's anything in the graveyard with a duplicate in hand and snag that from hand. Um, but he's trying to find a reason for these free spells. He's trying to find a thing in the ice or uh, an Arclight Phoenix with a way to put it into the graveyard. He'll start with Serum Visions. Looks like he picked up Misty Rainforest as the draw. It's going to go one top, one bottom on the scry. And here comes Surgical Extraction. He'll fall to 16 to cast that one. We're going to figure out what he's targeting in just a second, but my guess is it's a Grape Shot. Yeah, I'm right there with you on that. We'll get a take look at Shear's hand. Coach Roop did target Grape Shot. We have Desperate Ritual, those two Mana Morphos that we all knew about. That Empty the Warrens, Goblin Electromancer, and an Opt. I just want to say this hand is busted from Caleb's side. Even losing the Grape Shots, his hand is very good. Can generate a lot of Goblins and still have a bunch of cards left in hand thanks to those Metamorphoses. Uh, Matthew does have another copy of uh, Surgical Extraction. So if he has something like Anger of the Gods and then Surgical Extraction to take care of Empty the Warrens, there's a chance that Caleb's only real way to win the game after that is by attacking with Goblin Electromancer and Baral Chief of Compliance. It is amusing to see the Is It Phoenix take such a controlling role. You're right. He could have the option to just take off all the Storm decks win conditions, which usually the deck's really trying to race and come across the finish line. 
Yeah, this is a very interesting take from Matthew's side of things. Uh, but, you know, he, he built his, his sideboard in such a way and he sideboarded in such a way uh, that this could be a real possibility of how this game plays out. And if it works, you know, then all power to him. Here's a faithless looting for Coach Troop now that he knows the holdings for Sheer. Looked like Thing in the Ice was the card scribed to the top for Coach Troop. That's a good cover for those em that empty the Warrens. Actually chose to discard the other surgical attraction, so probably doesn't have access here to uh, to anger the gods for that one to take out all your one condition punch. Yeah, you know, the plan very well might just be use this thing in the ice to reset the goblins and then just hope that's good enough to win. Makes sense. You do go down on cards when you cast Faithless Looting. Right. Matthew does have access to a lightning bolt, so that could put uh, a you know a wrench in the works here for Caleb as he's going for this combo with his goblin electromancer. Uh, unless he's able to find another uh, mana creature in a hurry. But Caleb's under real no obligation to really go for anything in this spot. You know, Matthew has not shown any amount of pressure just yet. So far be it for me to, to say Caleb needs to go for it. He could just sit back another turn or two, maybe find another piece of the puzzle and just, you know, work from there. Looks like he's feeling a little aggressive. He started with Opt. Here's Goblin Electromancer as the follow-up. Shivan Reef. That would have been the draw, either off the opt or the draw step. And here is Desperate Ritual. He'll go to 17 to cast that one. I think importantly, he actually found a third source of red mana. So he's able to play Electromancer and then cast two red cards at instant speed with a Lightning Bolt on the stack from Coach Troop. And that extra mana is giving Coach Troop some pause. You saw him Lightning Bolt the Electromancer much quicker in a previous game, but he does decide on it. He's going to crack that Misty Rainforest. As currently the untapped land was Breeding Pool. He's going to need a uh, Steam Vents to fix that. Yeah, so we're going to have this little mini dance here with that fetch land trigger on the stack. Uh, Caleb has the option to Manamorphose in response to the fetch land uh, if he so chooses. But he's going to wait for the Lightning Bolt here in response. It's basically the same thing. Unfortunately for Caleb, though, I think a Dispel is in his immediate future. Yeah, that Dispel could look to be a pretty big deal. There is the Lightning Bolt on the Electromancer. Coach Roop did fall to 13 to cast that. Sheer will respond with one of those Manamorphoses, going to 16 to do so. Yeah, if I'm Coach Roop, I'm countering this Manamorphose with that Dispel and cutting this chain off right now. Looks like he chooses Letter Resolve. Things can get out of hand. Yeah, looks like that one is in. And that's plus mana because the Electromancer is still on the table. Blue-red floating, he'll draw. Desperate Ritual is still on the stack. Maybe he's thinking about dispelling that one. Yeah, that's also true. If he goes for another Manamorphose here, uh, he could also target that. There is the other Manamorphose that the players know about. That one's going to resolve. Two blue and a red in the pool for Sheer. Desperate Ritual still on the stack. Lightning Bolt targeting Electromancer on the stack as well. There's so many ways. I'm just trying to think through the permutations of each player trying to navigate this turn. Uh, you know, Caleb could have led with a Manamorphose, chosen said to lead with Desperate Ritual. Matthew could have gone Counterspell before the Lightning Bolt, which actually would have let his Lightning Bolt kill the, the Electromancer with the first Manamorphose on the stack, and then uh, it would have effectively countered this entire chain of events. Well, this is interesting. There's Dispel on the Desperate Ritual. Sheer is going to unsubstantiate his Ritual. Or rather, the Dispel. Uh, that makes the Ritual resolve. Never mind. This just gets him to four mana. This is clean. Empty the Warrens is the follow-up. Is that eight storm? Yeah. That's... Coach Troop at 13. These are lethal goblins. He's got to figure something out. Yeah, and things went south in a hurry here for Coach Troop. He's going to be looking to play this thing in the ice. It's his last card, and he needs to find a chain of cheap and free spells to transform it next turn or find an Anger of the Gods right off the bat. You know what would make it a lot easier to chain up three spells? Preordain. Preordain? Maybe. <laughs> maybe it's busted. I'll give you that. It maybe is really good. Ooh. Ooh. I, he's starting a Manamorphose, but before oh, no. casting the thing in the ice, not 
unclear what that's about. Maybe just hoping to draw that anger of the gods, but looks like nothing there. Kotroop is going to concede. Caleb Shear, 2-1 and one in the match. Storm over is a Phoenix. He'll advance to 4-0. and oh. I was going to say, he's 2-1 and one in the match. He's also 2-1 and one in our hearts.